we're going to experiment. And what we did is we set up an experiment and you had all these different things. Over half of these kids, when they walked across the campus, didn't swing their right arm hardly. There was a difference in a, an old airplane mechanic. I took my, uh, rather my psychology, I took my, what I learned in electronics and uh, hydraulics and mechanics, and that is that an uh, unsynchronized system, you need to de develop a way to integrate the sides, the systems. And the movement of the body through space is a graphic display of the operation of the brain in one dimension. And you want a special instrument? learn how to watch people walk. And I had a funny talent, okay? I'd recognize someone by their walk. I might have trouble remembering your name. But when I was at the university and I had um, 24 families every month, somebody would come back a year later, I could remember how they walked. I mean, I could remember what the kid did. I could notice an improvement in their walk. I mean, you caught up, that's a, I'm an idiot savant on walking and I'm getting a little older and losing that but the fact is is that the thing is is that was a, a talent the good Lord gave me okay and then I was hired to run the perception motor and visual perception lab at the University of Houston I was hired to the College of Optometry the Dean of the College of Optometry had seen what things have happened to kids and he hired me and Dr. Moore from education he said to me he said you are making the greatest mistake of your life. He said there isn't anyone here that has a better future in education than you do. If you go work with those optometrists, you are writing your professional death form. I mean just you're no way you can succeed. Okay? Because he was so angry that optometrists were looking at vision and reading and those things and doing training with kids okay and you got good optometers and bad optometers you got good teachers bad teachers good ophthalmologists bad ophthalmologists I mean there's not your profession does not tell you your competence I mean that's one of the places that we make a great mistake because a lot of people never stepped away from that certification or that professional structure that guards them because you can get in some of these things and be a crackpot, okay? And do a lot of damage. Every parent, when their kid comes home from school with a A in reading, should pick up a book and say, read this to me and listen to them read out loud. Because the best test I know of reading is reading out loud. You could actually listen to someone and tell whether they're comprehending what they are reading, okay? And a lot of people go a long way and don't really learn to read as efficiently as what we really should learn to read. Okay. Anyway, I had to ran this lab, and it was in the 60s, and it was when we were putting a man on the moon. Houston was a very exciting place. Okay. I mean, science could solve all problems. I had contact with a lot of those people. I mean, I didn't work with NASA, but had to share ideas and get things. Then I left. Um, my wife Beverly bought her daughter out of my program. And we uh, met and uh, married her and we had a child. So we decided that Houston was no place to raise kids. We moved up the Olympic Peninsula. And then I set up my shop making my materials and doing lectures around so I could make a living. But my main focus was being able to observe and work with my little kids. And the balance board, the 50 centimeter radius rocker is what my son Ron could balance on before he learned to walk. Okay? And a lot of the activities that we developed, it was not me that developed them, we developed them together. Uh, the program I had at the University of Houston, I had 12 families, had two groups of 12 families. They came in for two hours twice a week for a month. And what I had is I set up stations. I put the parents on the station. And then the kids moved through the sequence. Now what happened is that that left me free. I didn't have to be involved in the mechanics of the training activities. So I was free to 
observe how a child interacted with his own parent, how he interacted with other people. I was free to, I would come and be able to talk to the parents. A parent can see a problem in another kid before they can see him in their own. And so it gave me an opportunity to have, like my dean said, that I had created the best observational tool anyone had ever created.